Hello, kia ora, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you so much for joining us for our November Climate Watch update and also the outlook for summer for December and January. And this update is brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our official business partnership with IBM. So let's get into it. La Nina is peaking right about now as we head into November, the next few weeks. Uh, it is peaking up here in the tropics and really that means that the window for uh, storms from the tropics to come down our way and those extra sort of rainmakers, time's really running out over the next couple of months. That's not bad news, it's probably a good thing. We don't necessarily want storm after storm coming down, but La Nina at the moment is really in its peak. We're seeing a lot of lows coming out of the Indian Ocean and across Australia due to their Indian Ocean Dipole, which is like the Indian Ocean's version of La Nina and El Nino. So Australia's got rainmakers coming in for both sides, extra rain with low pressure zones, and a lot of it's converging around the southeastern corner. New Zealand's a little bit further away from it. On this animated map for the start of November, it shows low pressure in the dark shading, and so there's a lot of low pressure on the map, high pressure out to the east, and well out to the west. Otherwise, this actually does look a little bit like we're in a La Nina at the moment. So let's take a look at what is the uh, forecast. As you can see, here we are in November, and that's really the peak. By January, it's starting to pull back to neutral, and it is neutral by March next year. And in fact, that's what makes this a little interesting. We haven't seen this going into the neutral zo zone for a long time, this far northwards, up towards El Nino. So that uh, pink red shading to the north means El Nino and the, the blue shading here further down means uh, La Nina. So we've just dipped into La Nina but only just and it's pulling back out to neutral in the months ahead. So here we are in March next year well above the neutral zone and in fact maybe even flirting a little bit with El Nino. And that's the opposite of La Nina for, for us in New Zealand. It means more southwesters blowing through and usually more high pressure out in the Tasman Sea. Can make it a little bit cloudier, windier and cooler in many places in the west and drier and sunnier and more drought like in the east. But don't worry yet, we're not in El Nino. I'm just mentioning what it will uh, be like. And so let's take a look at the weeks ahead because this is what we do every month, break it down high pressure versus low pressure for the first few weeks of the month. And this just gives you an idea as to how settled or unsettled, warm or cold it will be. So in the first week, look at this massive area of low pressure. Of course, that's the storm right now uh, for those watching around November 1st and October 31st. This was the storm tracking through. So a lot of low pressure and these are the, these are the two big highs on either side of it. So we're bookended by high pressure, but at the moment it's low pressure dominating uh, a large population around New Zealand and Australia. As we go into week two, it's the old switcheroo. We swap out that low pressure with a big area of high pressure. So we're still getting variety. You know, it's one week it's unsettled, the next week more settled. That's what we're likely to see in the New Zealand area. Still remains unsettled in the southeastern corner of Australia. But as we go into week two, high pressure in charge over New Zealand. Some low pressure though up here in the tropics. Now by week three, the high pressure zone has become very narrow. A lot of low pressure in the Southern Ocean. That's quite normal though for going in towards the middle part of November as we get in towards summer. And up here in the tropics, a lot of low pressure as well. No storms though, it's just low pressure. So this is an interesting setup. It doesn't necessarily mean any major changes on the way, but this does suggest that as we go into the middle part of November, warm winds coming out of the tropics down for New Zealand and mostly settled as well. And finally, things more settled across Australia by the looks of it too. So still not completely settled yet, that's November, but it does look as though as we head through the month, it's just sort of balancing back to where things usually are. Let's take a look at rainfall now. This is the seven day departure from normal. It shows nothing too extreme actually. It shows a bit of rain still continuing around that southeastern side of Australia, but drier than usual up around Queensland, which doesn't usually happen with La Nina. And then further down to New Zealand, classic spring setup. Rain on the west coast, dry in eastern areas. So that's just the departure from normal uh, with that map. Here is the actual rainfall. Now at a glance, this is probably a little confusing, but what we've done is put into the white boxes areas with almost no rain, and the black boxes show the heaviest rain. So dry, Western Australia, dry for parts of Queensland, 
and dry in the eastern side of New Zealand, especially out to sea, but uh, that hugging that eastern coastline pretty dry. So in the black boxes, that's where the heaviest rain is. Still seeing up to 100 millimetres or so through the mountains and ranges, and here, two to 300 metres out at sea between New Caledonia and the north of New Zealand. So that does sort of suggest that we're still in La Nina. You can see the, the heavy rain up here in the tropics around Fiji, but New Zealand itself looks more like spring. This is the same map, just New Zealand only. And what you're seeing is over here on the west coast, up to 300 millimeters on the way for the next few weeks ahead. But over here around Canterbury, maybe only five millimeters for the next few weeks ahead. So that's a game changer. And for up here around Wider Upper and Hawke's Bay, where it's been very cloudy and cool and wet, now you're also drying out, only in that low dry area. The bulk of the rain up here to the northeast, and most of that's falling at the very beginning of November, could be some more coming in later on if one of those subtropical systems come in. But otherwise, this looks like typical westerlies blowing through, wet on the west coast, drier on the east coast. So this is the November departure from normal from IBM, taking a look at the whole month. And what it's showing you is uh, a little bit wetter than average in the very north and the northeast. Basically the same pattern that we've just had for the last month. And by the way, that's not a huge amount wetter than average, only 12 millimeters or so. So pretty close to average. And the areas that are drier than average, again, only 12, maybe 15 millimeters below normal. So you're still going to get some decent rain. Worth noting, even with that two to 300 millimeters coming for the West Coast, the West Coast is still leaning drier than average for the month of November. Now, as we expand that out, November, December, January, uh, it's pretty much the same. Potentially a little bit wetter over here on the eastern side, so you're not done. You know, La Nina is certainly still playing a role and we're getting more easterly winds and a little bit more wet weather and cloud, but again, only a little bit wetter than average. It's not extreme, it's not like it's in the blue, which you're seeing over here in Australia, they are much wetter than average over the spring. Um, and I think that'll be continuing on right through into summer for places like Canberra and New South Wales um, or Sydney. So those, those two main centres of Canberra and Sydney certainly seeing wetter than average weather. But in New Zealand, Auckland, only a little bit wetter than average, not looking too bad. Let's have a look at the soil moisture anomalies. Um, pretty much normal for this time of the year. It's a little bit scattered with the different colours, but we're not really looking too extreme. But I'd keep an eye on the dry here in Canterbury. I think that's likely to expand, as it might also around parts of Wider Upper. Elsewhere, this probably doesn't capture the heavy rain that fell at the very end of October. And taking a look at the departure from normal temperatures, this is right through uh, for the next three months, November, December, January. New Zealand leaning again, a little bit warmer than average. It's in that zero to about 0 0.7 degrees above normal. And that means that um, not every day is warm, but the nights are probably a little bit warmer. And in Australia, going the other way, it's over a degree cooler than average, maybe even two degrees cooler than average inland due to all that rain cloud and thick cloud cover and different airflows. So much cooler for many places in Australia, but New Zealand keeps that trend carrying on. And I know many of you complained that last month didn't feel that warm, but there was also a significant, um, I think, lift in temperatures at nighttime. And Mount Tarupe, who had no snow on it, despite rain falling there. So I do think New Zealand has been warmer than average. It'll be interesting to see what Niwa says uh, about the month of October and what actually did occur with temperatures. And just before we finish, the sea surface temperatures around New Zealand, thank you to the Moana Project. You can Google them and look at these uh, maps for free at any time. These are the actual temperatures at the moment. So into the mid to late teens, pretty warm if you want to go for a swim in northern New Zealand. Not so flash in the Otago Peninsula. And this is the departure from normal. So this shows you the areas that are basically in a marine heat wave in the red shading. So North Islanders and also down around Southland and Fiordland and the West Coast, all leaning warmer than they should be at the moment. And the long range forecast from Niwa and the Moana project for going in towards summer is seeing warmer than average sea surface conditions, which means perhaps a warmer summer coming up, certainly more humid, and it does tend to increase more cloud around parts of the country. That is all from me. Thank you again for joining us for our Climate Watch update. We'll be back again in one month for our last one of 2022. We'll see you then.